Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're going to take a look at a Docker container that's been brought to my attention multiple times recently from the folks here in the community uh, called Sterling PDF. But before we get into all of that, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Now I've been partnered with Linode for a long time because they're a great place to host just about anything from hosting a single website to a more complex multi-node deployment. You can find enterprise capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than other major cloud providers. You can quickly spin up operating systems from Debian and Ubuntu to Kali or whatever else you might need depending on your next project. Be sure to check out the link in the description or go to lenodecom slash dbtech to let them know I sent you. So if we jump over to my desktop up here at the top, let's go ahead and switch there. There we go. Here we can see Sterling PDF um, and it's got all kinds of different things that you can do. We're not going to go through all of these uh, because it would just make the video far too long. However, we are gonna touch on a few different things that I think will be interesting to you and possibly even to some other people that you might be willing to share this video with. So if we take a look, we can actually search for features. Actually, you know what, I lied. Let's go all the way to the top. We've got our little logo here. We've got a PDF multi-tool here where we can uh, add pages and we can we can rotate things. We can do all kinds of stuff there. Uh, we can, we've got page operations, so we can merge, split, organize, rotate, remove, all kinds of stuff here. We can extract pages. Um, we can convert image to PDF, uh, convert file to PDF, HTML to PDF, URL or website to PDF, markdown to PDF. PDF too, and then all of these other different options. So you can take a PDF, or you can take a file and move it to PDF, or take a PDF and move it to a file. A couple of different options there. Of course, lots of different options there. But uh, up here, we've got security. We can add, we can remove passwords, we can change permissions, we can add watermarks, we can uh, sign with certificates. Uh, there's lots of stuff that we can do in here. And I love that all of this stuff is available across the top of the page, is including um, favorites, uh, night mode or light mode or dark mode, I believe. Let's, uh, oh, ooh, oh, awful, awful. Uh, we can change our language. Uh, we've got settings over here. Um, and then we've got search. So lots of different options there across the top. So let's go back to the home page here. <clears throat> and uh, again, uh, basically everything that we saw up here is broken down into uh, a different option down here further in the page. Let's do image to PDF, right? Let's do that, because that's something that you might need to do fairly regularly, maybe. So what I want to do, we're going to come over to here. I'm going to come over to my YouTube uh, projects here. Home lab, is it in here? Nope, image files. Here we go. So there are a few. Uh, these are just thumbnails from some videos that I'm releasing uh, from a live stream that I did uh, on Saturday. So these are thumbnails. I'm going to go ahead and click on open. And here we can see that we have chosen five files, our image fit options, our uh, fill page, fit page to image, or maintain aspect ratios. Now, you'll probably want to maintain aspect ratios, that would be my guess, but of course you do have these other options if you need them. So I'm just gonna do maintain aspect ratios. Uh, I'm not gonna do auto rotate PDF, but you could. Color type could be color, grayscale, or black and white. And this says may lose some data. <clears throat> Um, so of course, select the option that you need for there. And then below this, this one screwed me up for just a moment, but basically this says convert to separate PDFs. So let's say you wanted to just mass batch a bunch of images so that each image was its own separate PDF. You could convert to separate PDFs, or you could merge all of them into a single PDF. And that's what we're gonna do here. Now that we've got our five images, or five files rather, we've decided to maintain aspect ratios. Uh, we wanna choose color and we're going to merge all of those into a single PDF. I'm gonna click convert. And just like that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just open that. And right there are all of our pages for um, uh, that we, we created out of those individual images. So super, super easy. Like that's how easy that was to, to merge a bunch of images together into a single PDF. Now, one of the things that I found interesting um, was actually adding page numbers. And I saw that somewhere. Let's, let's look for page. Uh, page, 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 where did it go? I'm sure, add page numbers, there it is, right there. So I'm gonna click on add page numbers, and then you can choose where you want the page number to reside. I like it in the bottom right-hand corner. Of course, you can choose wherever you'd like to put that. Uh, of course, first we probably should choose a file, so let's do that. We're gonna choose the PDF that we just created. 
Our margin size, we can select uh, small, medium, large, extra large. Medium is probably fine, but play with that. Figure out what you want or, or how you want that to look. You can do your starting number, uh, which pages to number. You could do, uh, you know, all or accepts, you know, one through five, two, five, nine, those sorts of things. So maybe, maybe you need to specifically refer somebody to page five and tell them, hey, it's, there's a page number there. Go look for that. And then they can find it. Um, that you could also do, you know, like page N of total, or, you know, you can add some, some additional kind of clarifiers in there so that you can get a better idea of everything. So I'm just going to do this real basic. We're going to start with page one. We're going to put it in the bottom right hand corner. Our size is going to be medium. And I'm just going to click add page numbers. And just like that, now we've got another one of these, but now look right there, we've got a page number in the bottom of each of these pages. So again, very, very simple to, to just do little um, menial tasks really, but just do it very quickly and easily with Sterling PDF in Docker. We're gonna do one more thing here, just real quick. Um, like I said, there's so, so much that you can do in here. You know, you can convert PDF to Word or PDF to, to presentation, PowerPoint, whatever. There are so many different things that this video would get bonkers long if I tried to show everything. So we're not gonna do that. Um, so what I wanna do um, is actually I wanna add, I wanna add a password. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. We're gonna choose again, the file that we just converted that has numbers on it. Here we've got two different passwords, right? So you've got an owner password and a user password. The owner password, like it says here, restricts what can be done with the document once it's opened, uh, not supported by all readers. So that's just something you'd have to keep in mind um, that if you do this, it may not be supported by all of, all of the different readers that are out there. There are so many, uh, everybody's got a PDF reader these days. So just know that that might be an issue. So I'm gonna type in owner, and I'm gonna type in user uh, for my passwords because I'm just doing demonstrative stuff here. Permissions to set recommended by, are recommended to be used along with owner password. Um, so you can prevent assembly of a document, you can prevent content extraction, you can prevent extraction for accessibility, prevent filling in a form, prevent modification, prevent annotation and modification, prevent printing uh, and prevent printing different formats. So let's just do that and click encrypt. And there we go. Now this one is password protected. So again, I can do owner and now we can get into our document. So again, they've taken all of these things that would often cost you money to buy software and they've just done it super, super simply here in, in Docker. Um, there is one more thing that I wanna do. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna do this. I'm actually going to do, oops, lipsum.com slash feed slash HTML. Cause I just want, uh, you know what, let's let's just grab this whole thing because I really I just want some basic text in here. Uh, I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to go ahead and open uh, a notepad. Oops, darn it. That actually opened in the wrong window right there. There is our, our notepad, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do lipsum and I'm just going to save that in my downloads and click save. So now I want to again create a PDF. We're just going to do this real quick. Um, image, image, image file. Yeah, there we go, convert to PDF. We're gonna go ahead and select our Lipsum. We're gonna convert to PDF. There we go. Now we've got our Lipsum converted. Looks great. I actually appreciate the formatting and all of that kind of stuff. Um, what I wanna do though, is I'm just going to, I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm just going to grab this segment right there. This Lorem Ipsum Delore Set Emet. Um, Anyway, this is all just garbage. This is, this is, Lorem Ipsum has been used for a really long time in typeset kind of stuff to fill in pages so that you can see what it would look like with, with what appears to be real words that are not real words. These are not real words. This is just for the sake of putting text in. They've been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, I used it a lot as a web developer back in the day. But again, what I wanna do is copy just this right here. And then um, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do uh, redact because there's an auto redact option here, right? Uh, so I'm gonna choose my PDF, uh, this lorem ipsum converted to PDF. And then I'm going to, I'm just gonna break each one of these into its own separate line. So anytime it sees one of these things, it should, in theory, black it out, redact it like you would see in like confidential files. Um, we're gonna use regex, we're gonna do a whole word search. You can choose what color you want your, your redaction to be. You can also add some extra padding and then you can convert the PDF to a PDF images or a PDF image uh, which uh, used to remove text behind the box. So we're just gonna click submit. 
I'm gonna give this a second, like so. And there we go. Those are the words that we asked it to redact. And hey, look, it's redacted them all there as well. Um, so again, just a very, very simple way. Let me get to me do this. So again, this is just a very, very simple way to do lots and lots of different things with files and pictures and PDFs to merge them, to, to separate them, to protect them, to redact them, and so, so much more. But I really wanted to show um, kind of the, 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 the basic things you can do and let you guys do some exploring uh, with this application. So definitely check out the link in the description down below for more information about, uh, about this project, all kinds of good stuff down there. But now that we have seen uh, how Sterling PDF works, at least to some degree, let's take a look at how easy it is to set up. Okay, so right here is their GitHub page. Again, this will be linked in the description down below if you wanna check this out, and I highly encourage it. Um, but we've got all kinds of good information here. We can see that a lot of this has been updated fairly recently, a couple of weeks, couple of months, um, you know, fairly recently, that this is still actively being maintained, and that's super important. Um, if we if we scroll down a little farther in the page, we get more information about about Sterling PDF and that sort of thing. A Sterling PDF makes no outbound calls for any record keeping or tracking. So anonymity. Yay. Well done, guys. I really do appreciate that. Uh, they've got a discord that you can check out. Here's a little screenshot. Uh, they've added dark mode support. Yay. Really love that. Uh, page operations, PDF features, all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, and if we scroll down a little farther, uh, we've got a Docker Compose right here, or if you wanted to do Docker Run, Docker CLI, whatever you want to call it, um, you've got some different options here. Uh, basically, this is the one that I've used, uh, just this Docker Compose, again, linked in the description down below. Uh, and if we jump over to my Docker instance, here is again that exact same Docker PDF, or Docker, Docker Compose, man. Anyway, here's the Docker Compose I was reading right there, it says PDF. Anyway, Version 3.3 services are Sterling PDF. Our image is frutal slash S dash PDF. Latest tag on that. So we've always got the latest version of the container when there's an update or whatever. We've got a restart policy of always. Now, this wasn't in there. Um, there's no restart policy in this Docker Compose. And I really, really feel like there should be. So that's what I've added right there is this restart always. Ports. It's gonna be on 8080. Again, if you need to change the port to something else because you've already got a container using port 8080, just change that half of it right there that's highlighted in gray. Uh, you can change that to whatever you need that isn't currently in use by another container. Uh, and then below that, we've got some volumes for training data and extra configs. And you can actually add additional uh, volumes like they demonstrated uh, over here in their Docker Compose. Uh, you can actually see that right there. And again, that's what I've got uh, right here. I've just got it commented out. I'm not gonna use it. Um, and then you can uh, enable Docker security, that equals false. Of course, you may wanna uh, en enable that if you were to put this into production and make it widely available. Now that's the other thing that we should probably talk about here real quick too, is that um, this isn't, there's, there's no way to log into this, I don't believe, by default anyway. It is just set to be an open uh, web page that, that anybody can use. So if you're going to put this in production, make sure that you do the right security things to prevent bad people from accessing your PDF converter. So just something to keep in mind there. So with that said, if we come back over to here, um, you know, we've, we've, looked and we've looked through all this. If you've got questions about any of, you know, like the environment variables and that sort of thing, again, they've got documentation over here on, on how to, to get more out of it and get a better explanation as far as additional things that it can do or not do or whatever. So definitely check out their GitHub repository and their Discord if you're not sure, oops, if you're not sure about something, um, there's, they've got a lot of great resources on how to get help with this stuff. Oops. Uh, so again, all kinds of great stuff in here. Uh, you can look through their code if you want to. Of course, you can do a code review. It's all open. You can look through all of it here. Um, anyway, once you've got your Docker Compose up and running, or you've got your configured the way you want, you know, just Control O and Enter and Control X, and then Docker Compose up. Oops. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna clear my screen. Right. Uh, Docker Compose up dash D. Um, now you'll notice that mine is Docker Space. Compose right there. Um, it, depending on which version of Docker Compose you have installed, it will either be Docker Space Compose, like I've done there, or it'll be Docker Dash Compose. So if one doesn't work, try the other. It should work for you. Um, and then the up is just saying, hey, bring up that Docker Compose file, and the dash D just means don't make it dependent on this terminal window being open all of the time. 
Um, so now we've uh, we've redeployed. Of course, it was already up and running, um, but now it's 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 up and running again. So that's how easy it is to get Sterling PDF up and running to be able to merge images and files and redact information. One thing I will say, I should preface or, or expand on that. The, the redaction only works in text. It will not, to my experience, redact uh, text that has been um, like merged into an image. I tried some stuff earlier with, with, with just testing some stuff out and it only actually reads text. It doesn't read images. So that's something to keep in mind with the redaction. But again, that's how easy it is to get this set up and running. So you've got your own suite of PDF tools to do what you may need to do uh, with your files, pictures, PDFs, password protection, all kinds of good stuff. So definitely check out the links in the video description. Um, while I've got your attention, hopefully you're still here. And if you are, thank you very much. Um, Saturday afternoons, uh, at least it's afternoon for me. It is Saturday at 1.30 p.m. That is Denver time. That's currently GMT minus six. Uh, I've been doing live streams. So if you're interested in, in hanging out for a live stream, definitely check that out. I, I announce them uh, all over the place, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, obviously, they, they all get announced all over the place. So if you're not following me, definitely do that. Um, if you would like, something I've been doing, something I did in, last, in our last live stream anyway, was um, featuring your guys' uh, home labs. Like, show, show me your rack, basically, um, and, and, and tell me what's going on. I will have a link in the description that will give you more information on how to submit, what to submit, that sort of stuff. So definitely check that out if you're interested in sharing your home lab with the community so you can show what you're doing. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to look good. It doesn't, like... We want to see what you guys are doing. We want to share our home labs with our community and talk about what we're doing with our home labs. So if you're interested, definitely check out the link in the description for that as well. But I think with all of that said, I do want to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you here real soon.